All right. Good morning, everybody. Um, Nikki, darling Nikki, has brought us yet another special guest to talk with us today about entrepreneurship um, and about personal and professional branding. So, Nikki, uh, give us a little intro. So I'm only going to give you a little oh, intro because she's got a great big intro that she can do. And we sent it to you guys so you can read it as well. Um, but I've known Carrie since way back when we were babies in high school. And she has done nothing but flourish and grow and been amazing um, as far as I can see, because she is like a serial entrepreneur, starts new businesses, learns new things, grows and works for amazing companies and everybody wants her and I wanted her. <laughs> so I was hoping that she'd be able to share some of her nuggets with you guys so that we can help build our businesses and do branding with our uh, real estate as well. So Carrie, please. Thank you. Thanks so much. Um, I really appreciate the invite and it's exciting timing uh, for me because I am actually in the process of launching another business. So when Nikki reached out to me, um, I've uh, always enjoyed any um, type of, you know, mentorship or insight that I can help give uh, people who are new entrepreneurs or even existing entrepreneurs that are looking to kind of revitalize their business or revitalize their brand. I do have one question um, that I wanted to uh, ask Nikki and Phil, how many people on our uh, call right now are new agents versus existing agents? Just a ballpark. So oh, I see. Two guys in the room that have list, lifted their hand and said they're new. Um, yeah. I, I've been doing it since 2020. Yeah. And then how long have you been doing it? 2020 as well. So two oh, since okay. 2020 uh, and then two brand new. Um, gotcha. Yeah, I was just trying to get some context on um, where everybody's at in terms of uh, you know, career, is it a career change for uh, a lot of folks on this call? Or are you someone that's been in the business and you're just kind of looking for some new ideas? So my hope is, uh, you know, I will tell you that there's so many opportunities uh, today. And obviously with the online platforms that we have, that's one of the things that's super exciting uh, to me. Uh, background wise, as Nikki had shared, I've got an interesting blend of um, hybrid corporate uh, leadership. And, you know, it wasn't always leadership. I started ground level uh, 30 years ago. And in fact, one of the things, Nikki, I forgot to mention, uh, one of my very first positions, and I don't even know if they still exist, but one of my very first positions was actually in an admin role for Century 21 when I was in high school. I, uh, Century 21 was actually my high school job. And uh, I worked for a local uh, broker. And then after college, my very first opportunity I landed was for Coldwell Banker Residential Affiliates. It was their corporate office in a suburb outside of uh, Chicago. And I used to actually transcribe, uh, Coldwell Banker would send consultants out to offices um, for personal consulting, where you know the consultants would consult Coldwell Banker agents, and those agents would use a dictaphone. This is really going to age me. Uh, the agents would use a dictaphone after their workday, and they would dictate, you know, the um, results of the day and their time with the agents. And I was a, a transcriber for Coldwell Banker, where I was in an office and kind of in a bullpen and you know, for eight to nine hours a day, I would transcribe the dictation of the Coldwell Baker uh, consultants. And then I advanced and became an executive assistant for one of the executives at this Coldwell Banker corporate office. Um, I also have an uncle that was uh, in Chicago and he was a custom home builder for um, all of his life and all of my life. So uh, we have had some real estate and construction in our blood. I also worked for Taco Bell Corporation after Coldwell Banker and I actually worked in the real estate and construction division for uh, Taco Bell. So um, those are just some things that I did from a corporate standpoint earlier in my career before I started to evolve and advance. Uh, one of the things that I have really learned though, and uh, it's been super important because I took a little bit of a career pause in uh, the past 
year. I had some relocations with my husband where I was supporting his career and I decided to just kind of, it was a good time for me to uh, transition. I was working at Nike's world headquarters um, a few years ago and then my husband had these opportunities to relocate and I decided to help support his career and it allowed me to take a career pause and also invest in um, some business coaching and education and things that would help get me up to speed with the best ways to brand and market a new business moving forward. So I knew two years ago that I wanted to start another business. Um, and then I knew once I got my family relocated and settled that I'd have that opportunity to launch. But I also knew that business is looking a lot different um, today than it even was two years ago with uh, the pandemic and all of that type of stuff that has lent an opportunity for so much business to be conducted online now. So it's refreshing, Phil, to hear that you actually have some people in your office with you today, <laughs> because obviously this is not this is not the norm in business now. We're all working from our remote locations. Uh, or our cars or, you know, wherever. And so, you know, for me personally, I've needed to learn how to adapt um, my business approach moving forward. So one thing that I would share with you and I came up with, uh, there's, there's, not, there's numerous tips I can give you on personal and business branding. The very first thing though, that I would share with you is um, from my perspective, I think the two are integrated. So if you are someone that's from the camp of, I want my business life to be my business life and my personal life to be my personal life, I would suggest to you that's gonna be a disadvantage in the way that business is conducted today. There are such huge advantages in sharing who you are as a person as part of your personal brand. And so I have followed Nikki for a very long time. It has excited me to see her move from Chicago to Tennessee as an example, and how her business model is um, you know, changed as a result of that. Those are things I would have never known if Nikki wasn't willing to put herself out there personally and share that aspect of herself so I could take interest not only as a friend, but as a follower. I'm a follower of hers um, online. So I think the very first thing I would ask you to do is eliminate that division of personal life versus business life. You know, you are here to show up in life in general. So um, that's your business life, it's your personal life, it might be your spiritual life. Um, you know, there's lots of aspects of life that I think we need to be open and willing to, uh, to share within, uh, again, within reason. Um, so that's something that, you know, I think is important because you should think about the type of presence that you have and are projecting to the world, uh, because the minute you're online, there are so many people that have access and ability to, you know, check in with your day and see the things that you're posting and how you're doing. Um, I'd also like to uh, ask you to really think about, and this is, I'm certain this is covered in a lot of your, your professional training, but really think about who your audience is, because sometimes we make the mistake and we're all entrepreneurs on this call, sometimes we make the mistake of thinking that we need to serve everybody. And so, especially in your business, shoot, anyone that wants to list a house or anyone that wants to buy a house, it's kind of like fair game for everybody, right? And though those opportunities might present themselves, you might get referrals from people and those clients are all different demographics and you know it could be single people it could be families it could be professional couples whatever the case also think about the fact that you have an opportunity to niche down so i'm not suggesting you don't want to serve any great lead that can come your way absolutely you do but as you're thinking of yourself as a personal and professional brand don't be afraid to niche down. So what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is you might decide that you really just want to serve the 55 and up community. Um, maybe you just want to serve new home buyers. Um, maybe you want to serve 
uh, relocate the relocation market. Believe it or not, I used to know, I am currently connected with someone when I was living in Portland, Oregon for, uh, for five years who only handles relocation business and does very well with it. Uh, because the relocation business that she happens to handle is a lot of the athletes in Portland, and she was able to kind of get her foot in the door with that. So you could actually build a business totally niching down and serving um, a target audience that that you resonate with, you know, something that excites you and you can connect with. So I wanted to mention um, that because you don't have to serve everybody. So um, really think about what that specialty is that you'd like to have. Uh, speaking of specialties, I think this, this can translate very well in any business, but let's just talk specifically about your business. Um, what's your thing? Like what really excites you? Is it new construction? Is it luxury homes? Is it, um, I live in California, I'm in San Diego right now, and I'm really uh, starting to, to accept this idea of these um, prefabricated, you know, modular homes are a big thing out here because they're more affordable than the typical $2 million homes that you still have to put $300,000 into re <laughs> renovating. Um, so there's a certain type of home here that I'm even starting to adapt to like, all right, I guess I've got to be a little bit more open-minded about what I would even, you know, what I would even be interested in buying. But let's go back to the idea of things that excite you, things that are going to get you up every day. Maybe you're someone, I think about Nikki with this, maybe you're someone who specializes in bungalows. Maybe bungalows are your niche. Maybe you want to be, you know, Joe the bungalow um, agent, you know? So um, it's not, nothing right now is uh, impossible. It's so amazing and exciting to me to see people building businesses off of very specialized concepts. Um, so I wanted to just kind of put that out there for you. Maybe your thing is fixer uppers. Maybe that's the, the main thing that you really want to focus on. And you would like to create all of your um, social media and your branding around that type of concept. Uh, next thing that I would like to share with you, and I think this is important, um, and, I, and this is great. I'm looking at Nikki with her purple background right now, darling Nikki Holmes, and uh, it's brand colors. So this is something I'm in the process of working with my designer on. So I really would think about on your personal social page, as well as your business social page, coming up with a color scheme, usually branding. Uh, from what I've been learning in the last year is going to be at least two colors. So, uh, and you know, uh, it's interesting. You can even like Google and research the effects of colors um, and the meaning behind colors. Um, if you're interested in color psychology, so you can kind of come up with an effective color scheme for yourself. But there are um, what are called Pantone colors. And so this is all very searchable stuff on the internet. You can actually look up Pantone colors. Um, you can also look on platforms like Pinterest and you can search Pantone colors and they will give you color schemes that are pleasing to the eye or that are complementary. And those are things that can give you some ideas for your brand. So when do you want to utilize those colors? Well, as I mentioned a moment ago, I would definitely put them on a social media banner um, on your personal page and on your business page. Could also be an opportunity when you are um, perhaps doing some video, some short videos or some, some stories on social media. You might want to wear your brand colors. Um, perhaps you send things out to um, clients, whether it's electronic and it might be a newsletter, or maybe you're someone that even has some merchandise to support your business that um, can utilize brand colors as well. Now, I know um, EXP probably has some pre-approved things, so I don't want to make suggestions to you that will um, overshadow what you need to do or you know any standards that you need to follow per your uh, your agreements but these are still things that you can do on your um, personal social media as well um, another thing that i was thinking of as i was taking some notes before our call um, is 
get comfortable with social media. So if you are someone who's like, you know, I, I prefer to um, just see what everybody else is doing, but I don't really, I'm not good at video. I can't do photos, you know, all of that. You're probably in the wrong business right now. Um, anyone who wants to be an entrepreneur today is missing an opportunity if they are not exercising all of the things that are available, um, either free or even for nominal fees through all of these social media platforms. Video is king. And you might think that you have, you know, crooked teeth or, um, you know, you don't present yourself well on camera or, you know, whatever the case may be, I would suggest you were our own worst critics and go ahead and pre-record some stuff on your phone, just short little videos, just little practice videos, put stuff out there perhaps for, you know, a network of trusted friends um, and just start to do it. Just start to take the action to get comfortable on camera. Um, so statistically, I would suggest on all of the social media platforms, it is video that will uh, prevail over posting photos. And I know there's plenty of opportunities where you can post photos of, you know, homes that you're listing or homes that you've sold and go ahead and continue to do that. Uh, however, engagement wise, people want to hear you. They want to see you. Uh, doesn't really matter, honestly, uh, you know, what the context is. Sometimes it might be heading to the ball field, you know, with the kids. Uh, sometimes it might be in the car in the midst of errands and you've got, you know, a tidbit of something valuable that you'd like to share with your audience. But people really do look forward to having you show up. So get comfortable with that. And, um, and honestly, just don't worry about all of those, you know, perceptions and things. You don't even have to do Facebook Live today. You can do a lot of pre-recorded stuff. Uh, stories on Instagram and Facebook and obviously Reels on Instagram and Facebook are also very powerful uh, tools. And one thing I didn't do, I don't have all the engagement numbers to back up some of these things that I'm suggesting, but I will tell you I've invested... Um, it, a good 10 grand in the last year in coaches who are uh, proven performers and they share their data on, um, you know, the outcome of, of social media and video versus photos and all of that type of stuff. I should have had that data ready for you. Um, and I apologize. I don't have it, but uh, trust me when I tell you videos king. If you grab that data later and want to send it in, um, I'll yeah. send a recording of today. Okay. I'll some people, there's some people that wanted to be here, but that couldn't, I'll include that yeah. in there as well. Awesome. Okay. What would you say is like the, the frequency of how often you should be showing up in video format or on online like that? Yes. Thank you for asking that question. Um, one of the points that I, uh, have a little bit further down on my list and let's talk about it now is show up every day. So the thing that's so magical about what's going on right now in our, um, with all of these social media opportunities is that you literally can record a 15 or 20 second message. And that could be your daily check-in with your audience or with newcomers. This is not like you've got to get on a live for 15 minutes and prepare ahead of time what you want to say and, you know, all of that. Now, I don't want to confuse that with, uh, you know, showing up and babbling and, you know, saying nonsensical things. We don't want to do that. I mean, you do want to have some intention and some purpose. But Phil, I really believe showing up on a daily basis um, and another thing I want to mention, it's also on, on some of my tips here, is choose your preferred platform. So if the idea is a little overwhelming with everything else you're juggling right now and launching, you know, perhaps your new business or your existing business, um, you know, with your company, then, you know, do what's reasonable for you. Maybe Twitter is your platform. Maybe it's Instagram. It doesn't have to be TikTok, but if you enjoy entertainment, TikTok is your platform. If you've got dance moves, 
do TikTok. You know, you can you can exude a business message uh, through that. And I'll tell you, I'm not on it, and I'm still I'm still making a decision as to whether or not that'll you know that'll work for me. But you know, TikTok isn't all about dancing. There's a lot of actually really good educational um, stuff and business stuff on TikTok as well. Um, but figure it out. I mean. Uh, Facebook is still a very, very good platform. If your audience is the, uh, I would say the, you know, 45 to 50 and up demographic, don't underestimate the power of Facebook. Facebook is still a super, super um, uh, popular and, uh, and proven platform. So um, just figure, you know, figure out what your thing is. It could be Pinterest as well. Pinterest is probably one of the most underestimated uh, platforms out there. And another really great one is LinkedIn. Um, so don't be afraid to engage on LinkedIn, but start with one platform perhaps and build some confidence and see how you're doing with that. And then you can always go ahead and add, you know, the others based on, uh, on time and, and your passion for, uh, promoting yourself on social media. I also would, uh, absolutely consider, uh, new photos, and, you know, if you're someone that has been using the same photo for the last five years, it's time to change the photo. And we all know someone who is either an aspiring photographer or um, a new photographer who is reasonably priced. But I think the best few hundred bucks you can invest is in uh, new photos. I actually have a branding photo shoot coming up uh, myself. We were supposed to have it last week and the team uh fell ill and so <laughs> and i was like all ready for it uh so we're actually going to do it next week but there's nothing that makes you feel better um than just getting some good photos out there have fun with it truly have fun with your business you know um and and all of these exercises that are required to build business or you know again revitalize or rebrand your business uh enjoy it people pick up on your vibe in unbelievable ways um and also those photo shoots are a really great way to utilize brand colors or company colors whatever it is that you're choosing to use um, so that's that is something I think is so well worth the investment and you can repurpose photos in so many different ways um, through some of your online marketing, through potential merchandise, through newsletters, through, um, uh, you know, any any promotions, banners, things like that, that you might end up generating and creating if you do sponsor events locally in your town. Uh, all of that stuff. So you'd be surprised the mileage you'd get out of photos. I would get new photos taken. If your budget permitted, I would do it every year. Um, I think that's something that should just be part of a branding plan. Uh, I mentioned this a moment ago. I would think about, uh, definitely think about building your email list. And Phil, I don't know if you're someone that gives some guidance on that type of stuff, but you have this opportunity to reach so many people uh, beyond just your friend and family circle through these initiatives that we're talking about. And so coming up with uh, ways, there is knowledge that you have, even if you're new to this industry, you have knowledge about something that is relevant to home, uh, home buying or you know, home buying is about creating a life and creating comfort and creating stability and creating security. And so you might have knowledge about things outside of the real estate industry that are worth drafting in, you know, a, a little free document that you could give to someone. They call it a freemium in the business that you can give to someone in exchange for their email. Um, so it, it would be worth it to subscribe to an email service like a flow desk or something like that um, to uh, generate an email marketing campaign. And I don't wanna dive too much into that because I have a feeling your company probably covers stuff like that, but just know it's important. And so when we talk about showing up on social media, you know, perhaps through short videos, little tidbits um, that you can share with your uh, audience. Also know that the regularity of communicating via email, and I'm seeing a lot of very successful entrepreneurs do that on a weekly basis, where they're just sending something very short, even if it's just recapping their personal week, 
but then maybe including some links to things professionally that will uh, will be helpful or a link to the company or whatnot. Yeah. So it, in our in-house system, Follow Up Boss, which we use, you yeah. actually can draft an email and insert a video in oh, the email. Um, yeah, so you, a little bit of verbiage and then the quick yes. video right there. It's it's good. It's good quality stuff. Yeah. And you know what, Phil, you're touching upon something that's so important to our ability to actually use video in uh, in our email marketing now is magical. And it's just another way to show up um, in, you know, same situation. If you're feeling a little uncomfortable about video or whatever, utilizing it in your email marketing is like a great way to practice with your audience and get comfortable doing that so that you feel really comfortable showing up every day. And again, just sharing a little bit of uh, something about yourself. Um, so I think that that's super important. You know, I also was talking about integrating your personal talents. So, um, I, you know, I made some notes, maybe you've got some hobbies, maybe you restore furniture, maybe you make a really great pie. Um, maybe you make a really great, you know, bowl of spaghetti. Um, maybe you uh, have decorating talent. There's something that you have that you can bring to your audience that isn't always about listing and buying a home. So, you know, you, you want to make sure that you find that really great balance between some of those things that are just those cool attributes that you have, things that you, that you have a really unique talent in, and figuring out how you can integrate that in the business. I'm going to give you an example um, in uh, just a few moments of someone who I think does a really great job doing that, who is a, a broker in Alabama who I've been following. And I will share uh, her name with you so you can check her out on social media. And she just really has mastered that skill of talking about a lot of things that have nothing to do with real estate. And yet she's a very successful broker. Um, so I'll, I will share that with you, Phil. We, we actually have two of our agents right now that are on this call um, and they are making cookies, oh, 1300 cool. cookies. So <laughs> that they're going to package those and hand them out to the neighborhood. Liz and Lorena, give us a oh, little wave from your cookie amazing. factory. Shout like out it. to you. Thank, yeah, that's awesome. That's exactly what I'm talking about too. You know, it could be something where like, you've got a couple of days of stories that are just about that thing that has nothing to do with real estate that you bring to the table. It's the idea of just really being an interesting uh, person and a likable person. Someone that like, you know, when you you know, look at your device or you boot up your, your laptop, you're like, oh, I wonder what so-and-so is doing today. That's the approach that you want to take. You'd like to be that person that, you know, people have that interest in inquiring about. Um, so we mentioned showing up every day. I'll just reiterate it because it's a, a point I have here and a, a couple more just to bring it home. Another thing that I think is a really great idea, and I'm in the process of doing this right now, is um, consider partnerships. Again, within reason um, and whatever is, is allowable um, currently in, in your, um, you know, in your arrangement with your company, but I would suggest um, there's lots of opportunities for affiliate partnerships. So, you know, similar, similarly, it might be something where there's a furniture company that you really like. Maybe there's a locksmith that you like. Maybe there's a nursery that you're loving. These are companies that you can softly promote on your pages. Um, they will probably reciprocate and tag you uh, as well. And then what I would do is when you grow a following, um, I would definitely approach those companies and ask if they have affiliate codes that you could share with your audience. You can get a little commission off of those things. The days of us believing that we should just put all of our eggs in one basket, you know, earning revenue uh, just one way are also um, far gone. So, you know, you're going to see a lot of very successful entrepreneurs have multiple income streams. Uh, could be something where they're educating. You know, a lot of people are offering some sort of education that is, is fee-based, whether it's a document you're paying 
for online and it's, you know, seven bucks for a PDF or it's a $149 class or um, affiliate partnerships or merchandise or, you know, whatever. There's lots and lots of different ways to generate income from this one core business that you have. So in due time, I would ask that you think about how you can uh, diversify uh, your business and yourself so you might have some additional earning opportunities like that. Uh, lastly, I would say finding a handful, just a handful of mentors uh, who inspire you is probably a good guideline for you moving forward. Uh, one thing that I did early on is I hired, a, a, first of all, one huge mistake I made, I hired two coaches at once. You don't want to do that. Um, make sure that if you're spending money on someone in their program and their knowledge, invest in that person, uh, extend that respect to them and their program and the time that they've put into it, not to wander and start sourcing, you know, other people who might have great ideas too. There's lots of people that are sharing very generous information today, whether it's free or whether it's something that you're actually paying for. And it can really confuse your goals and it can confuse your process. So I would figure out who are you gonna make a commitment to for the next year? Who are those three to five or three to six people that really inspire you to move forward in your business? And I, you know, I would really kind of um, condense it to just a handful of people that you are following or, your, uh, your goals are going to get very muddied. And um, it's just really the, the whole idea of focusing and being able to have clarity. I'm to a point now where there's two people that I take a look at on a regular basis who I've personally trained under that are my mentors. It doesn't mean that there aren't, you know, there isn't a world full of other amazing ideas, but for my ability to focus and fully execute ideas, I need to be able to minimize how much influence I have and not getting overstimulated by all of this stuff that's available to us. I just wanna pause for a moment. Though, um, believe it or not, that was like 10 things, probably 10 to 12 things that I came up with um, that I think are really important as you're thinking about your personal and business brand. I want to pause for a moment, just see if there's any questions. And then if I could quickly share three extra tips for you, just as an entrepreneur, uh, I think that that will uh, be something that'll successfully conclude our time together. So uh, at this moment, does anyone have any questions? Right. We're good. If you don't want to verbalize the question, throw it in the chat. I'm watching the chat. Sure. Um, and then I, I do have a, a question as far as uh, I've been for the past week, two weeks, trying to figure out how to brand myself. Yes. So what are, what are some exercises? What, like, I'm a single dad. I like um, yoga and Tai Chi. Oh, I'm a yeah. relaxed guy. So chill yeah. with Phil, get a good deal with Phil. You know, how, how do you form, yeah. formalize Hey, this is how I'm going to market myself. This is my little moniker type thing. Is yeah. there an exercise to do? Yeah, you know what? I would um, I would probably start by thinking about what are your most likable qualities and what are you doing that can integrate that. So, of everything that you're sharing, uh, that you just shared, I will tell you, a man doing yoga is like. That, that is going to be uh, something that resonates. People are going to think that's cool. You know, first of all, men are going to think it's cool because a lot of men think that they're not flexible. I'm also a, um, a certified yoga instructor. I taught yoga and he had owned a yoga studio for many years. So obviously that resonates with me. But another reason why I think it will resonate with people is because of the world that we live in today. And because of what we're, you know, the couple of years that we've overcome as a, a country and even globally, um, the ability for people to find some sense of calm. And I would suggest to you, Phil, that if you amplified um, your interest in yoga and your consistency with it, and if you just did a story a day or however frequently you're practicing it, showing you going to the yoga studio or showing some takeaway from that, that would probably be as important as any million dollar home you're going to list in the future. So it is that 
perfect example of um, something. And another thing too, being a single dad, because dads are champions as much as single moms are. And I think for decades, it's been, you know, for centuries, probably it's been a lot about, you know, moms being the primary, you know, uh, parent and shaper of children and families and all of that. And we're seeing today so many dads because again, of our ability to have uh, a window to this through social media to see all of the dads and how they're multitasking and how they're juggling things. Those are two things right now that are a normal part of your life that don't require scripting, don't require any effort, don't require pretending. This isn't about pretending. It's about bringing you who you are and bringing your A game every single day. And so those are just little things that are events in your life that I would show as an integrated part of how you juggle that with your business. And I think that those are areas that are gonna help you grow a following. Um, let's just have a very engaging way about you. I mean, I'm just meeting you in this call and you know, it's the smiles, it's, it's not griping about things on social media. That would be something I would say is a huge blunder. And I still see people that are very near and dear to me doing that, where they're showing up on camera to um, bitch about something. And gosh, I, like, I don't need that. I'll, it actually brings me down, you know? And so that's not what you want to bring to social media. You want to bring energy. You want to bring vibrance. You want to be that person again, that people want to, you know, look up and, and see how you're doing. And, you know, they see your photo on stories and they click it because they want to see what's going on. Um, that's the energy that you want to bring, uh, not only to your business, but obviously to your life as well. A um, few other quick things. Uh, one is stick with your purpose. So when Phil and I just had this exchange, I'm thinking, He's a, he's a provider. He's a dad. It's not just about him. You know, he's got, uh, you know, another person or people to take care of. And so when you're feeling that heaviness of, we're always going to have that negative voice that comes in. It's going to say, oh, I don't feel like, I don't feel like washing my hair today and getting on camera. Or, you know, I, I don't even feel like speaking. I don't even feel well today. I don't really want to show up for this. I would say, think of your greater purpose. What is, what is the whole reason why you need to uh, be successful in your business? What is that whole driver? Is it paying for college for the kids? Is it you have an upcoming you know, wedding that you're uh, contributing to? Is it that you just really wanna provide a comfortable life for yourself? Is it that you don't wanna have to go back to work to a corporate employer? <laughs> Um, we all have something and that something needs to supersede any of that negative discussion that's going to talk you out of the things that are necessary to be successful in business today. Um, next thing I wanted to share quickly is, uh, and we've mentioned this a bit, but I'm just going to bring it, bring it to you again, your vibe, your energy, that smile, your enthusiasm, um, your appreciation for people the, the um, consensual exchanges you're gonna have with people that you're connecting with, like you know you're on the same level, the excitement, your laugh, maybe there's something unique about the way that you laugh. You know, all of those little things are things that matter and are a reflection of who you are. And obviously um, that's all part of your brand too. And then, you know, uh, last thing I was, uh, Mention, I mentioned this a little bit in our discussion already, but follow rock stars. Like, you know, there are so many people that are bringing crazy, crazy things online. And as entertaining as it might be, um, it, if it's not useful to your life and your business, I would say, you know, shut it out. You know, there's a, a filter we all need to have in terms of what type of information we invite into our life and our world on a daily basis. And there's so much junk out there on social media. And so follow rock stars, follow people that are perhaps even exceeding where you're at right now. Follow people that are 
grassroots entrepreneurs. They've built it from literally nothing. You've seen them evolve over two or three years. Those are the people that really excite me. Um, the realtor that I'll share uh, with you, in addition to the rock stars on your team, uh, who you're already aware of and, and following, uh, just because I think she brings a different perspective in how she approaches social media. And I'll also share from a metric standpoint, she built, um, she's 55 or 56 years old. She built a TikTok following uh, in less than six months of over a million followers. She's got a huge Instagram following. Um, and she is uh, so unconventional in terms of, you know, what a perception perhaps of a, a professional realtor might be. She is someone that just brings her uh, herself through and through. She was a former uh, interior designer, and her name is Amy Barton Cotney. So it's Amy, A-M-Y, and Barton, B-A-R-T-O-N hyphen Cotney, uh, C-O-T-N-E-Y. And you will find her, I know she's uh, obviously on TikTok, she's on Instagram, she is on Facebook, and uh, she has a business page on Facebook. I would encourage you to probably get a business page, by the way, um, from the perspective of being able to advertise and promote your business. There's a lot of advantages and things you can only do with a business page. So if you have an opportunity to actually set up a professional page, go ahead and do that. And a great way to build your business community is to share it on your personal pages. Another great way to build a business page, because a lot of people are afraid they're not going to get a, a following on it, is to ask your friends to share the page. Let people know I'm building a new business page. I'd appreciate you following it. Um, so that's what I have for you. If there are no other questions, I'll, I will let Phil uh, carry it from here. Well, wait, I want to tell you that I do follow Amy. She's hilarious. Yeah. She has such a sense of, of crazy style. Her husband's hysterical. Yes. Like her, 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 like you don't even know she's a real estate agent at first exactly. until like some time into it where she's like, oh yeah, you know, whatever she's doing houses or whatever. She's amazing. Yes, I yeah. agree with you. You know, the beauty of something like TikTok, which was a platform I really wasn't into. Uh, and again, I'm, I'm trying to decide if it makes sense with the next business that I'll be launching. But one of the neat things about it is um, that it they really don't condone a lot of business advertising. So what you see on TikTok more often are people promoting personal pages, and then they might share somewhere in their video or in their post, the um, you know Instagram name of their business. And then you're like, oh, wow, there's another woman that I follow. Her name is uh, Janine uh, Pennell, and she owns a business called Drop the Walls Boutique. And her business, Drop the Walls Boutique, which is based in Florida, is extremely successful because of her personal TikTok page, Janine Pennell. And she's another one, she has a funny spouse, they're really into dancing. So they, they do a lot of like goofy dances. They also clean the house and they do these funny videos like cleaning the house together and stuff. You know, again, TikTok doesn't have to be your thing, but if you're someone who is funny and you're animated or you did theater in high school or college, then get on TikTok because you probably have some creative things that you can uh, can offer to that platform. But Nikki, I'm glad that you're following her. Um, she is a hoot. She, the way she dresses, she kind of dresses like she's from the 70s with like these vibrant colors and flared pants and things like that. Um, uh, but she's just a, a great lady and, and a true example of someone who's built a business and is not talking about real estate 24 seven. Um, however, when she does talk about it, it's pretty interesting stuff that she puts out there. Anything else? All we right, gang. any questions? No. Yeah, last week we had the cowboy of real estate join us. Um, wow. That's his, what he's known as, the cowboy of real estate. And yes. one thing that he mentioned from his TikTok following is it's not hyper local, his yeah. reach, the audience that he's he's reaching, but they'll still ask real estate questions. And then he finds them a real estate agent and he gets yeah. a referral fee. Yes. So yeah. He makes a ton in referral fees without ever having to do 
any activity other than matching them with a real estate agent. Yes. Yeah, it's amazing how people are generating uh, income streams today that are things that just supplement their core business. And, you know, one thing that Amy does uh, quite successfully, and I see Nikki do this uh, quite a bit as well, I'm sure a lot of your, your team members are doing this, promoting other businesses. So when I get on Amy um, Barton Cotney's page, I know she loves Auburn, Alabama. It's a university town and she is so uh, such a positive force in promoting other businesses, sharing events that are going on, showing a video of the parade that she's attending. I mean, she has no problem engaging in the community. And so it doesn't even make us make sense to be in your business if you're not willing to participate in, in the community and some local events. And again, support other entrepreneurs and small businesses. Well, I hope that that has been uh, helpful. I hope it's shed some light on uh, perhaps some, some other aspects and you know got the wheels turning in terms of how you can create your own personal brand, how you can get excited about your business, and honestly, how you can show up and give it everything that you have, because it doesn't even make sense to venture into an industry or profession that is entrepreneurial if you are not willing to show up and give it everything that you have and utilize all of the things that are available to us to be successful. So I wish you all immense success in everything that you're doing moving forward. Awesome. Definitely appreciate you taking time out of your, I know it's morning where you are there in California. So taking time out of your morning to share what I'd, what I'd like to do is for us to go around and just everybody throw out what's one piece of uh, encouragement and or something that scared your socks off that you heard today. So one takeaway uh, that you're either going to do or you're going to admit, I'm scared to do that. All right. So let's go, Brian. Hey, uh, Oh, I'm in. <laughs> okay. Um, sorry, there was echoing in the background. Um, I just need to get on social media. I've, I've, I've created my Facebook page and I've just been lazy about it and I need to uh, get some followers, um, get some photos on there and, and uh, share other people's listings and just create something for me. So show those biceps on camera, man. <laughs> the dude is built. The dude is built. <laughs> And you know, Brian, right. I, would, I would say, think about doing things differently. Don't do what everybody else is doing. Like what everybody else is doing, we could find that anywhere. So really think about some of those unique things that you, that you bring to the table. Thank you. Yes, you bet. All right, cookie makers. Oh, Liz, man. Lorena, you're in the same room. Your sister's making cookies for clients. What's a takeaway you had you had today? There we go. Hey, um, go big or go home. I have no idea. <laughs> I like, uh, well, I'm definitely someone who doesn't love. I've, I'm active on social media, but I'm not active in the sense that I put a lot out there. So I like sharing businesses. I like that too, supporting local businesses. Something I could definitely do more of. Yeah. You, uh, and you know, uh, Lorraine, I would say uh, that is a wonderful way to show up when you're like, oh, first of all, if anyone thinks that they don't need to be on social media, I would challenge you to say you will, your results will be so different if you start, oh, you know, <laughs> show up on social media, right? And L R Lorena, to your point, I believe you were the one that was speaking a really great way to build comfort with that is to kind of showcase other businesses. So not to make it about yourself, make it about somebody else. That's a super um, easy way to get acclimated um, to video and to posting and to you know that frequency and all of that uh, type of stuff to demonstrate some excitement about something someone else is doing. And that whole video thing and finding time and all of that, it's, um, this is just another segue. It's just another thing that we need to do. It's another thing that you need to schedule. It's another thing that you need to commit to. And as I mentioned earlier, sometimes it's a 15 second video 
uh, honest to goodness, I couldn't believe the big bucks I was paying entrepreneurs in the last year. And when I realized most of their video content is small little blips, and some of them are just promoting businesses on stories, I was like, holy moly, I'm making this way more than it needs to be. Right. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for your input. And those cookies look really good. <laughs> Hope so. We've been telling my son for like a week, tell everybody on the bus that you're getting cookies. <laughs> you bet. Yes. What a dedicated effort too. And they look delicious. <laughs> 1300 of them. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> a lot of cookies. All right. We have two people in the room that aren't on the video, but they've been listening and watching on the big screen. Alyssa, we can't see you, but shout out something that you uh, maybe took away from today. So, um, the social media thing for me too, as well. Um, and also just having a great mentor, which we're lucky enough to have Matthew. So, and Phil, and Phil, yes, that was great. Thank you, Jake. I yeah. appreciate it, baby. Matthew's my assigned mentor. So, sure, sure. Technicalities, real tape. So I call him at like midnight sometimes and he answers, and then six in the morning, the next day he still answers. It's like just finding someone that really helps you along is. Somebody that's committed to your success. Yeah. You're not alone, right? Yeah, I call him Nobody answers you. All right. So Jake, Jake, maybe jump on Brian's. Uh, here comes Jake on Brian's computer. All right. I can unmute hey, you. I'm super excited to hop on the talk, get some dance moves. I got some friends that are pretty big, so I got some help behind my back. So I'm going to hit them up, see what they got, any advice for me, teach yeah. me how to do videos, stuff like that. So that's all I got to do is get with my buddies. So awesome. You know, uh, video is so much more fun. And I will tell you guys, if we had this call two years ago, I would have been like, yeah, no, there's a lot of other things that you can do. Um, I'm so excited about video. And I, you know, I have found some people that really specialize in it. And another thing that will happen is if that's something that is working for you and you're enjoying it and it's bringing you the results that you're looking for, you know, again, don't just do this for a month. Like you've got to do this stuff consistently for, I would say a good six months commit, just like you would anything else, you know, relationships, jobs, all of those things that we have to commit to on a deeper and longer level. It's the same thing with all of these elements of marketing and branding ourselves. Um, but, you know, video is super exciting. And as you evolve it, it could get to a point too, where, um, you, you also could shoot video and I'm talking like from your phone, you don't have to go get fancy equipment. That's the thing that's so cool about this. You're doing this with current devices. A lot of stuff that I've got right now, I'm doing from an Android. I'm not even on an iPhone at the moment, but iPhone has amazing capabilities. And so you can shoot this stuff, make sure that the sound quality is good. Um, again, do some little test ones. You can like shoot them out to friends and things like that. It honestly is not that big of a deal. We are talking about a few seconds of your life on a daily basis. When you start to build video content, you can actually take those uh, clips that you have and you could hire and outsource someone on Fiverr, for example, um, that does video editing at a nominal um, rate and then they can actually compile videos for you in the future. So I'm so optimistic. I feel that if you commit to some of these strategies that we're talking about, you will probably need to outsource some people. You're going to have to find some freelancers on some, some of these online freelance sites and have people compile some things um, for you because content creation is something that you're going to want to schedule. So, you know, instead of running around with clients and feeling like you have to physically be present for all of your lead generation and stuff like that, understand that you have this available online. All you have to do is eliminate the no and, and do it. Understand that this is a necessary part of operating in business today. Be excited about it. Don't dread it. Be excited. It's almost a form of entertainment in our businesses now that we're providing to clients and prospects and have fun with it. So if you get dance moves, cool. Awesome. Like, you know, magnify oh, the talent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know, another thing I was going to say, too, um, from some um, our other lady that commented just before you. 
Um, it's great to partner with people. So if you've got peers or if you've got an opportunity, if you live locally with someone and, and you've got a, a friend or a buddy in the business and you guys decide you want to do a weekly, you know, a little uh, video or recording about something, you want to share something that would be of value or you want to show yourselves baking, um, you know, together that week or whatever the activity is. Uh, it's perfectly fine and interesting to do things in pairs. There's a lot of businesses that started out solo that now integrate other people in the social media that they're putting out there. Boutiques are doing this constantly. There's tons and tons of online boutiques. The super successful ones that I see now are doing a lot of their video content creation with another guest. Like I know a boutique owner who brings her neighbor in and everyone loves the neighbor now, you know, and uh, brings the neighbor in for little short videos on things. So, um, you know, really just have fun with it. I know it can be a bit intimidating. It could seem like this other thing that you have to do, but if you can do it effectively, it is a huge, huge time saver. And it's gonna save you a lot of money because a lot of this stuff is still very, very much free. Anything yeah. else? It's free. You do it. It lives on the internet forever. So yeah. you go to bed at 10, 11, 12, and that person who's up scrolling at 2 a.m. falls in love with your mannerisms and attitude, and they watch all your videos and encourage them. And one thing that, that we learned last week, don't forget to say somewhere in your video, not maybe not every video, but hey, if you ever have any questions about real estate, would love to chat with you. It's what I do. Yes. Boom. Not, I would like to be your agent, but hey, let's chat sometime. Love you. Bye. Yes. And it gives them permission exactly. to contact. Yeah. You know, audiences today aren't looking for a lot of formalities. And um, if you're someone that offers, you know, something that could be useful, maybe, you know, maybe you're a gardener and that could be useful for your real estate business. Um, even uh, considering creating something like a YouTube channel. And again, I know a lot of times when people like me say that, you're like, oh my God, when am I going to have time to do that? Um, you'd be, first of all, you'd be surprised. A lot of these platforms are not as crazy difficult. And there's so many tutorials that will help you learn how to edit or set up, you know, set these things up online. But you can actually show things like simple gardening tips to educate on YouTube. And YouTube is very big into what Phil is suggesting, which is concluding with a call to action. So what do I want you to do now that you watched my three minute video on YouTube and I just showed you how to pot a plant or something? You know, Now, what is it that I'd like you to do? Well, I'd like you to subscribe. I'd like you to follow. I'd like you to do you know, X number of things. So don't be afraid to you know, tell your audience what their next step should be. I would caution you don't do it in every single piece of content you create because it'll be too salesy. You just want to be a person who is trusted. That's what's probably most important in your business. People want to know that they can trust you. Um, so excellent. It's very good to hear everybody's feedback. Oh, Nikki, did you have any takeaways, last minute thoughts? Yeah, she's going to make me start a TikTok. <laughs> I have fun and I watch, but I, yeah. I know I need to do it. I've always known I need to do it. I tried to do 90 seconds with Nikki some years ago where I just did 90 seconds of talking about real estate, but that's a long time to talk. It's a long time to, to come up with a concept and talk, but TikToks, man, you can do them quick and about other things. So yeah, I'm going to start posting on TikTok. Thanks, Carrie. Yeah, you bet. And I, you know, I would say, you know, it's, again, it's really interesting, like LinkedIn, could be a really great platform in your industry as well. So, you know, choose choose the one that where, first of all, where you may already have a bit of a following. So um, that's always a, a really good idea or choose the one that resonates with you, which is the platform that you tend to go to the most. Um, and, uh, you know, and it, again, like TikTok, I find, TikTok, I hated it initially. I was like, this is so goofy and juvenile and, you know, whatever. Then I started to see people that are strategically using it for business. Then I started to see a whole bunch of people that don't have to dance on TikTok. You know, then I saw, um, uh, oh, I'm trying to think of who it was. I've, I've seen a lot of very, very interesting people 
honestly just provide really great content. What Nikki's saying is an excellent point. 90 seconds on video is a very, very long time. So when I'm suggesting showing up every day, again, literally I'm talking about something that is, um, or I'm sorry, Nikki, it was 90, were you doing 90 minutes or 90 seconds? Oh no, 90 seconds, but it was still okay. a really long time. To yeah, yeah. Real okay. estate concept and keep talking and try and keep it short at 90 seconds. So yeah, I didn't do too many of those. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing with video. You know, again, think about how much we click around. And one thing with a lot of this uh, content that you create, you want people to see it from start to finish. So um, I'll use Facebook as an example with algorithms and stuff. Uh, here is one thing you might not know. So if you set up a business page on Facebook and you decide on your friends list, you're just going to send that page out to everybody and hope that they that they were going to like the page and you know accept your request to like that page and they don't. That actually is um, has a negative adverse effect on the algorithm. So those are some of the little things that I learned when I was taking um, a lot of social media classes over the summer. I was like, oh my God, I had no idea because we all naturally think I'll just set up a page. I won't tell anyone I'm doing this. I'm gonna shoot it out to everyone and they're gonna see I have a new page. Well, here's a great opportunity for you to create a very simple short video. It would be a video on maybe your personal page saying, hey everybody, I am, full, you know, fully into, you know, my new business now, this is what I'm doing. I'm going to be setting up a business page. You will be getting an invite for that. Um, uh, if you'd like, could you please comment below and let me know if you're willing to support my business and I'll go ahead and send you an invite to my business page. Boom. You accomplish that in like 12 to 15 seconds. So, um, so yeah, there's lots of little nuances and things. So pick your platform and make sure it's one that you can fully invest in and, um, and you're not like wasting it. You're not wasting it trying to post things that people aren't going to watch from start to finish. That's a big thing on YouTube. It's also a big, th big thing with podcasters. Um, when those things are being viewed, they actually have to be viewed from start to finish or they don't count. And that's stuff that can be detrimental to your presence and actually showing up on social media. That's like a whole other, whole other thing, but something that I thought is worth mentioning. Uh, so awesome. I hope that this will open your mind to, um, you know, again, being excited about all of the great advantages of going social with your business. Mm -hmm. F fantastic information today. Um, basically what you're doing by putting your genuine self out there yeah. and letting people see who you really are, you allow other people the chance to find you as a part of their tribe, right? Yeah. Um, I grew up in South Georgia where everyone drove pickup trucks and had the flag, rebel flags and spit their skull, ding. And I never felt like I fit in. Never, <laughs> never felt like it. If it wasn't for the internet, I wouldn't have found my tribe. And so now you're you're able to put your genuine self online and that will attract people to you who yes. need you in their life and then need you to help them with real estate. It's fantastic, yeah. fantastic admin. So I yeah. really appreciate you sharing with us today. Oh, um, you bet. It's yes, this stuff that we're talking about is such an icebreaker for any entrepreneur. I don't care how long you've been in business. It takes that awkward acquaintance period out. And there's nothing that frustrates me more than when people just start posting photos. It's just photos and way too much written content, and all this kind of stuff. People are not viewing content the same way today that they were a couple of years ago. So that's why it's important to hear the voice, to see the eyes, to see the excitement, to hear the inflections, the quirkiness, all of that kind of stuff. Um, it's a great icebreaker. It's going to save so much time because the client has been watching you on video. They've been seeing your posts. And that's one of the reasons why I know that you're the perfect person to handle my real estate transaction. That's what you want. Awesome. All right. Well, we definitely appreciate you spending time with us today. So people in the room are starting to clap their hands and going like this. So um, hopefully we will have the chance to have you back on and um, share. We're trying to broaden this group, broaden the reach. And so we may circle back around to you, check on your new business that you're starting. Excellent. I think they were teasing us with the cookies right there too. 
Yeah, yeah. girls. <laughs> They should be doing a little video while they're making the cookies, but who am I? Know, I? Right? Oh yeah, that's a good, cha- a good challenge. For everybody on the call yeah. today is what Thursday by Friday at noon. Post some kind of story, some kind of video content, some kind of just a little blurb of something, whether it's on Facebook, or Instagram, or whatever, and then in our company Slack, throw a little link. Yeah, excellent. Okay? Let's hey, see who Paul. does it. Phil, can I mention one other thing that would be great for everyone? Oh, hang on, we're laughing and talking in here. What what was that, Carrie? Here's one other thing I wanted to mention that would be, uh, I learned so much from people who are a, a far younger generation than I am. And one guy who's great to follow, his mom actually is a big social media marketer and influencer, but the kid's name is Brock Johnson, B-R-O-C-K Johnson, J-O-H-S-O-N. His mother is a woman, her name is Shalene Johnson, and she was the creator of a lot of fitness programs years ago. She created a program called Pio, and she used to be a fitness instructor on the Beachbody platform, and she is now a digital creator and marketer and stuff. This is her kid, and she has influenced him to be an entrepreneur, and he was a college athlete who actually funded his... um, college tuition through social media. So he's 24 years old now, and he um, is an Instagram expert. And so he has monetized. Now, mind you, he's not employed by Instagram. He's not, he doesn't have any direct uh, connection with Instagram. He's just an Instagram user who created educational classes based on his trial and error with Instagram. I think it would be great to subscribe to a newsletter that he has. So get on his social media. He's definitely on Instagram. He's on Facebook as well. Subscribe to his newsletter. He gives, uh, he's lately, he's been posting weekly um, to his newsletters. I'm sorry, he's been blasting it out weekly on email. And he gives so many great social media tips that are free. You're going to find that a lot of the very successful content creators and educators online give a boatload of free information. And then when you want to study under them, then you're kind of like paying for their programs and things like that. Um, And you're following, you know, conferences and things that they do. But a lot of these people are very, very generous with free information that they'll share. And he's one guy that I like. If I were you, I would follow him. And again, subscribe specifically to his newsletter where he is giving out very frequent tips lately. I've been getting something from him every week. I saw him in person, like maybe four years ago or something at a Kajabi convention. And he and his mom were there and they were talking about like all that stuff and using Kajabi. And so he was amazing. And he was like 20 or something. Yeah, he is. uh, You know, it's interesting because everyone, you would think, oh, he's living off a mom or whatever. Well, mom has taught her children to be entrepreneurs and they provide for themselves. So these kids have not been funded by mom. Mom's influence has helped a little bit. Um, She's obviously been a really great coach and mentor, but he is his own entrepreneur now. And there's some things he does with his mom. And then there's a whole lot of business that he's doing independently on his own. But he is one of the most generous sharers of information, especially on Instagram. So if you are an Instagram person, um, you will definitely want to get uh, get in. He's also super smart with affiliate marketing. And so some of the affiliate marketing ideas that I have are actually straight from Brock Johnson. Again, he's 24 years old. These are some of the people that I have learned some really amazing things from. They're fearless and um, and they're, you know, they're putting themselves out there. So, so he's definitely going to get a call from myself or from darling Nikki to invite him to be with us on our little deal here. So yeah, uh, again, thank you for sharing your time with us uh, yeah. for free with no sales pitch. That's what I, I'm trying to do with these is not to make there be a hook or a sign up for this or a pay that we genuinely just want to help each other survive and thrive um, in the realm of real estate. So. Yes, super exciting. Thank you for inviting me. Definitely. Thank All right, you. well, you have a good, good day, okay? Thank, thank you. you. Thanks, have a great day. All right. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.